All right, we are live. Welcome to another edition of Elevate Your Grind brought to you by the Cannabis Lab. I am your host, Todd Rosales, and I am very excited to be here. We have launched on LinkedIn Live. The LinkedIn audience has welcomed us with open arms. Bill Gates is not holding a grudge against what me and Melinda did, and he is not kicking me off LinkedIn. I am just kidding. That's just pure humor there. But folks, uh, it's been great being on LinkedIn. The reception's been great. I've always been a fan of LinkedIn for cannabis networking and everything else. So very happy the show is here. Um, it's been great. I've loved doing this show. I am getting to a point, as I said, folks, my, my second daughter is coming soon. We might take a hiatus. But we might end up doing more shows than we used to do just because I will be working from home. And hey, it's only an hour a day. So we will see what happens. But there is a chance I will be taking some time off and give you some time to miss me. So with that being said, folks, we've got some great stuff for Cannabis Lab coming up over the summer. We've got some awesome panels, some in-person events. We're working on some kind of fundraiser again for the middle of the summer this year. I know we tried it last year, but the pandemic was supposed to end. It didn't end. We're kind of doing the same thing again this summer. The pandemic's supposed to end. It may not end. We'll see what happens. But hey, we're getting back into it. We're being safe about it. It'd be fun. So check that out at joincelab.com. Of course, if you missed our interview with Gary Santo last week, honestly, it was one of my favorite conversations. Gary just knew so many different things that we jumped from marketing to investing to growing and scaling and all these different things. And it was just a really fun conversation. So I'm glad LinkedIn, that was your first view of our show. Um, I think today is going to be another great example of what this show can do. So my guest today, um, she was a recommendation from a friend. She had reached out as a fan of the show. She was on another show um, that my friend Rosie Matteo does from Pots of Popular. I'm a big fan of that show, particularly my episode. I think today's guest might be my second favorite episode. Of course, I'm going to put myself first, but she has a great story. And I think, you know, if you guys saw the Kendra Stocking interview, one of the big things that was the, the biggest themes of that show was talking to cannabis about your kids, right? And as me being a parent with one kid and expecting a second kid, I think it's really interesting that we're growing up in a different generation where we're having different conversations about cannabis with our children, with our families and everything else. And I think a lot of that stems from the mom, call me old school, but it's just something like mom sets the rules. So when my guest today reached out to me, I was very excited to talk to her about her entrepreneurship and her business, but I'm very excited also to talk to her about just her journey with cannabis and being a mom. So without further ado, because I've been talking for way too long and my guest is 10 times more interesting than I am, please welcome Ashley Reynolds, the co-founder of EMT CBD, or I think EMT actually stands for Elmore Mountain Therapeutics. Ashley, welcome. Hey, Todd. Thanks. That was an awesome intro. And like you said, I'm a huge fan of the show and giant shout out to Rosie. Thank you so much, Rosie Matteo, Matteo Communications for introducing us. Um, can't wait to get into things. Yeah, it, it's crazy in our industry how accessible some of these titans in the industry are, right? Like all of a sudden I was on the call, I was on the phone with Rosie Friday and we we're talking business real quick. And then we just started talking about like family and like things like that. And she asked me about my kid. It's nuts. Then all of a sudden I hang up. I'm like the largest PR, you know, the, the best PR agent in the industry. Just like we're just bullshitting. Is it, do you, do you have that level? Of I feel the same way. I feel the same way. I feel like I can DM Rosie and she gets right back to me and I know how incredibly busy she is. And yeah, I mean, I, I just met with her team. Um, they're all just amazing. And yeah, it just speaks volumes. Um, if you guys listen to the episode from Pot to Popular with, with Rosie and I, we really talk about that authenticity that comes that, you know, gravitating towards women or towards folks who really care about, you know, going up and reaching down for the next person to come up simultaneously. I was listening to your episode with Cody Sanchez, and she has that same mentality. And I think that and I'm hoping, Cody, if you're listening, that um, we can meet someday too, that eventually people who really, truly care about that mission of doing good while being good, I think we all just gravitate towards one another. So yes, yeah, social media does a lot, um, but I think it's also the universe. Yeah, you know, it's funny. This is where I get jealous and like, I feel like a, a, I get left out, right? Because 
this show, we've done a very good job supporting the top women in cannabis, not because of the top women in cannabis, because they're just really freaking cool and they're very nice and they're accessible and they're easy to talk to. So like, you know, I socialize with people like Rosie and Emily Paxia and Cody Sanchez. And, you know, I'm, you're in the circle with me now because I become very friendly with people after this show and just like, and then all of a sudden, like I go through an article, I'm like, oh, they're all my friends. It's like, well, I can't be on that list. I don't make the requirements. So I get jealous <laughs> of you all because you guys are all crushing it. And it's just like, you know, it, it's nuts. But I feel like it's crazy to me that you feel the same way because I look at you as an entrepreneur who has, you know, you've built your business, you've grown your business, you're starting to scale it and you've, you have these major accomplishments. I'm just a moron with a camera and a microphone that, that talks loud and asks a lot of questions. So like, it makes me feel better that you have that, that same feeling. But I think that's important to talk about is like, no matter on the outside, how much somebody looks at our life and they think we have it together and we know all the answers, whether that comes in the form of happiness or success, it doesn't mean we all have our shit together. We're just showing you the few seconds a day that we do. I mean, it, do you talk about that a lot with people? Indeed. I mean, I hate that. Like, let me show you how successful I've become and how shiny everything. I mean, that's what Instagram is for. That's what websites for, but these interviews lately I've been doing you know, we're about to come in. Well, we just celebrated actually our fourth year. So we're heading into our fifth year in business and I'm ready to talk about the nitty gritty and talk about the ugly because I've grown so much from it. And it's such an integral part of the success. You know, the success is great, but like, that's so fleeting compared to all the things that, you know, you know, all the mistakes that you've made, all the things that you've learned. That's what I find, you know, I take with me every day, you know, success is a bad teacher. Um, and, the mistakes are really the ones I want to highlight for people. I feel like the whole sort of green rush is still very much here, but I feel like people don't really necessarily have a realistic grasp of like how hard it was to get to this year. Um, it's great seeing all the legalization. It's great seeing all these companies popping up, but like, come on, like it's still as your show entails, like the grind is real. <laughs> oh, for sure. I mean, that's why I wanted to start the show is to tell all these stories because you know, we, people look at the industry and they think we're making money hand over foot and that, you know, cannabis companies are printing money. And I can tell you as somebody who works in the B2B side of cannabis, they're, they're not right. We look mm -hmm. at these deals that are happening that, you know, these major deals, they're mostly stock people like, yeah, you know, read, read between the lines. So it's interesting. And that's why I want to start the show. I want to circle back to your entrepreneurial journey, because I think it's awesome, especially considering that that wasn't your whole life. But mm -hmm. I want to talk about the TED talk. So mm. when was that? Was it, it's a TEDx talk. How long ago did you do that? That was in 2019. Yeah. No, excuse me. 2018. Like, just like your like concept of time. Like, I just, I feel like after last year, like I've no, you know, time just like, doesn't make sense to me. So yes, 2018. <laughs> I'm just getting back to the point. <laughs> I'm just getting back to the point in time where I actually know what day of the week it is. So I'm, I'm happy <laughs> to know that, but yeah, 2020 didn't exist. So I'm watching this TED talk. Um, obviously I watch a lot of stuff with you as I do my, my, my due diligence and I loved it. I loved every second oh, I'm following along. So I'm listening to the journey. I thought it was so cool that you threw on the, the doctor's coat and had the, the clipboard when you're, and you had, cause I'm also a fan of comedy. So the way that you were having the conversation with yourself as a doctor, like I looked at it as almost like one of these one man shows, um, that I've seen yeah. and you have this conversation. I'm like, holy shit, what kind of doctor did she go to? That was so insightful. Like, I can't believe there's yeah. a doctor out there that's practicing this. Like I didn't learn from a doctor. I learned from a fucking ex NFL player. And mm -hmm. then you're like, that never happened. I'm like, son mm -hmm. of a bitch. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, yeah. thinking, I'm like, oh my God, I, she had the coolest doctor in the world, but what mm -hmm. gave you the idea to present it that way? Because to me, like you had me on the edge of my seat. I'm like, this is the next level. And then you took it all away and you're mm. like, it's not happening, but it needs to. Yeah. Thank you so much for Spoiler picking it up. So, for anyone who hasn't seen it yet. I'm sorry, right? but it's a great talk. Go see so it. So it's definitely a one woman show. Um, I wrote that on the plane home, um, after a really amazingly, um, educational experience with what was known as grassroots, which is now Kira leaf. Um, another thing about Ted, if you guys don't know, is that, um, I had to get that talk approved. So, you know, even though they really want these innovative talks and they really want you kind of expanding to these new technological advances and sciences and of course cannabis, um, I had to get the talk approved. And so I wrote 
five different TED Talks before I landed on that one um, that they were like, yeah, okay, I think we can do this. Um, and it really kind of just like stripped away all the stuff, all the things. And I was like, how can I make the biggest impact both on the medical side, because I'm also a medical professional, um, and also on sort of the woman layman's mother side of things, which is really the true story of how I started the brand. That's awesome. So seven different versions of the same story just to get it approved. And I mean, was there, I mean, did you get to, you know, we'll talk about things that are going on in Hollywood and everything else, release the Snyder Cut. Did you get to tell the story the way you wanted to, or, you know, nothing against the Ted folks. We understand where it is, or did you have to right. leave out parts? Um, well, the only thing I really wanted it to be called um, was instead of it being cannabis, the future without stigma, I just wanted it to be called cannabis, cannabis, cannabis. <laughs> Um, <laughs> for uh, SEO and search searchability purposes, but um, no, um, when it was finally approved, um, and again, like you get assigned a coach, the whole process of getting, you know, asked by Ted to do a talk versus when you actually get to do the talk is like six months. And then it was another like nine months before it was even um, made public. And also just not to like put Ted talk under the bus, but like, all of my colleagues that presented that night, all of their TED Talks were put up about a month or two after the TED. And then mine had to go through this very extensive review prep, uh, process. And then if you guys notice, there's a big giant disclaimer underneath it about them not endorsing any of the things that are in the talk. And so, yeah, there still was very much a lot of red tape, but I was like, I don't care. It's a TED Talk. It's going to put me, you know, on the moon above other brands. So I don't care. But yeah, I mean, it was a lot of a lot of things that I honestly I didn't know even after the TED talk had been done. Um, I wish I'd recorded the whole thing, which you can't. Um, so everybody, there was 420 people in the audience, my lucky number, which is also a total true story. <laughs> 420 people in the audience. I know, right? Um, but I was like, you know, I I felt like I'd already won knowing that I had said it to 420 people and had gotten up and done that, which I had never spoken to a crowd that large um, in Stowe, Vermont. And so, you know, I felt like I'd won. So all the other stuff afterwards and now it's actually you know viewable on youtube you know everything else is just kind of gravy so yeah no it was a great it was a great video i honestly really enjoyed it um i i say that like you had me on the edge of my seat and then you you hit me with the m night Shyamalan twist and you know it was crazy <laughs> because i i can't tell you there's a whole section on my notes here that i started writing down questions about that doctor and about that exchange and then you pulled the, the rug out from under me and i crossed it all out so i'm like okay well i can't ask about something that didn't happen so folks if you haven't seen it i highly recommend googling it giving it a look it's great um let's so let's go back so you had two kids in two years you self-diagnosed yourself with postpartum anxiety what is what is that like to you? What was your relationship with cannabis before? Had you had used it therapeutically at all? Had you used it, you know, kind of non medicinally just to enjoy with friends and things like that? I'm really interested to understand your life. Because that's I'm going, I'm not going through postpartum anxiety. But obviously, I'm married to someone we had a child, we're having a second one within a short time frame as well, too. And, you know, I come from a household of tough it up, you're fine. Right. Mm -hmm. And I noticed that sometimes with my wife, I tend to take that approach. Right. Mm -hmm. So candidly, so I can be a better husband, I want to have this conversation for you so I can maybe recognize the signs because I, I imagine too, even as great of a relationship that you might have with your husband, it might be hard to convince something that you have this thing that doesn't have like a scar in your face or, you know, something that mm -hmm. defines that you have it. So I'd really like to understand kind of your experience with cannabis before and then leading up to that and how you realize that this could help you. Yeah. Um, first of all, that's amazing. And then I really, you know, if your wife ever needs anyone, please give her, give her my number. Um, because mm -hmm. yeah, it is such an intense transition, um, especially having kids so close together. So, um, you know, I'm born and raised in Vermont. So there's a robust market here for cannabis. There always has been, there always will be. Um, so the access for me um, has been really easy. I've always really known where my product has come from. It's always been something that has been easy and I haven't felt like it was ever illegal. Um, I mean, yeah, you know what I mean? And so I would say my relationship with cannabis was really more of like a healthy one. You know, I used it when I needed it. Um, you know, I had morning sickness for like pretty much my entire pregnancy with my second child. So I used it for that. Um, my midwife was really supportive of that. And then, yeah, I, I really was like a sucker punch to the gut, you know, three months after having my second child, 
I felt like I was like, I got this. It's my second kid, no big deal. And then, yeah, I mean, all of a sudden, like wasn't sleeping, had a pit in my stomach from the moment that I woke up. And just like you, you know, I was like, suck it up. It's a busy mom, busy mind. Of course, that's going to go hand in hand. I'd got back to work as a dental hygienist, high achiever, type A, all the things. And like, didn't really acknowledge what was happening with my symptoms was just like, well, this, of course this is happening, you know, of course, like a lot of justifications, but it just kept getting worse. And like my appetite went away and I was breastfeeding full time. And like, really like my husband was like, we can't keep going on like this. And I was like, I don't know what's wrong with me. Like, I love my kids, but I like, nothing feels good. Nothing feels right. Um, and I have friends out West who had sent me some THC tinctures. I was having a particularly triggered day at work. So I took three doses instead of like one or two. So I was like high at work, which made it worse because THC for me at the time made my anxiety worse. And so I knew I needed something. I knew I wanted a holistic approach, but didn't have any idea what CBD was. Even being a you know pretty comfortable cannabis user, like didn't really understand the whole, you know, physiological side of what cannabis really was besides what THC is, had no idea what terpenes were, flavonoids, had no idea what that was. And so um, getting introduced to CBD was a total game changer. I mean, literally like many of you, you know, back in 2016, when I ordered my first bottle of CBD, I was just kind of reading testimonials and hoping that what these customers were saying they were getting a relief was gonna happen to me. And thank goodness it did. And I mean, everybody always asks me, like, why didn't you just stay a user? Why did you become an advocate? And I think because my postpartum was so terrible and my improvement from the symptoms was so great that I was like, there's no way that other women don't know that this is available. There's just no way that I can keep this a secret. But it was, you know, it was really hard because here I'm a mom in a small town. Everyone knows me. I'm a medical professional. So I hold a medical license. I treat lots of patients and it was really that moment of like, do I really want to put myself out there? Even though I have all these, you know, trusted things and credibility to myself, like I really want to go there. Um, And I don't, you know, to be honest, like Rosie asked me this too, like, I don't know what like pushed me over the edge. I just went with like the call. There was a voice that was like, I know so many girlfriends at play group that are just look terrible. I know they're not sleeping if I could just talk to them about CBD, I don't care. I didn't care about starting a business, didn't care about selling it. I just wanted them knowing it was available. And yeah. then that just snowballed. That's an incredible story. I mean, for you to turn a negative into such a positive where like you went through a bad experience, but you got an epiphany and you realize like there, you know, that's the one thing, not one thing. I think that's been talked about with moms and with women for a while that they don't, you know, the, the real side of pregnancy and postpartum is not shared and talked about and it's glorified in movies and with like celebrities and shit. And like the Royal baby is born and this bitch gets a makeover in five minutes after she gives birth. And we see this pristine makeup filtered person right after she gave birth, I was in the room. It looks like a fucking murder. It looks like a murder (laughs) happened. Like it, the janitor comes in in the hazmat suit with a hose and soap. And like folks, postpartum is no joke. And I don't need to go into the details because my wife might kill me, but you know, it's, this isn't talked about. So for someone who went through it, I'm sure you, you hit that realization, like other people need to know about this. At some point, I'm sure it went from a passion of just sharing and helping people to we can make a business around this and I can follow my passion. When that decision was made, what was your thought about having that conversation with friends and family where you go from the advocate that, hey, this helped me because you know your intentions are good. You know, this helped me. This is a great product. I need to educate people people on it so they understand that it's a great product too but that's not what the court of public opinion thought at that point so you know did you have a moniker of fear where it's like oh my god i have to tell everybody what are they gonna think i mean absolutely um you know i think the the biggest turning point for me um Again, you know, this comes back to like what was available at the time was I saw, I think the first or second year of the Women Grow um, conference and the presentations given by Jane West and AC Braddock. 
And so that was like wind in my sail that here are these women doing this, walking the walk, their moms, like really putting themselves out there to inspire other women. Like that was a big one for me is that any doubt that I had, I saw these modeling women doing that, that I was like, I think I can do that. And then the other side of it was that, you know, I love Vermont so much. It's near and dear to my husband and I's heart, but like at the time, like the cannabis industry was happening and it was so male dominated that it was like, if I don't get out there as the voice for women, like, is there going to be one? And yeah. if there isn't like, what does that look like for the market? And so, you know, of course, you know, going back to being a dental hygienist, like I had to tell my bosses that I was going to start this company and that, you know, the state was behind me for the state regulation and legalization for CBD. And I was pretty, you know, pretty confident that if the state was feeling good about it, that my state licensure wasn't going to be in jeopardy. Um, and they're pretty like forward thinking bosses, but of course, you know, they were really reluctant and were like, you know, you can't talk to your patients about it, which I did, but um, <laughs> you know, things like that, you know, but um, I think because I was so, and continue to be such a nerd about epidemiology, um, about the science behind cannabis, that any sort of doubt people had was quickly replaced by my conviction for the plant and conviction for the science that people, and people know that I'm stubborn as hell. And they're like, well, if she gets an idea in her head, like this is what she's going to do right now. So um, I think it was a combination of all those things, but yeah, of course people were worried. I mean, I left uh, my career of almost 20 years. My husband left his job of being an engineer. We have two kids, a mortgage. I mean, you know, we have all the things like why on earth rock the boat. And, you know, we both just felt so so compelled. I mean, that, and I mean, we had a little bit of success right off the bat. And I think that that helped us, you know, we were hosting these informational educational sessions in restaurants and Stowe after hours, there wasn't really anywhere else to sell CBD. It wasn't being sold at co-op. So like people would come listen to me for 20 minutes and then buy everything that we had. And so like, obviously we did that over and over and over and word spread pretty quickly. The internet helped with that, but like it quickly became, you know, this teeny tiny idea just like really skyrocketed. So there really wasn't any time to like second guess it <laughs> or be nervous about it. I mean, we were getting published in newspaper articles and getting put on the news and I was winning pitch competitions and then the TED talk thing happened. I mean, that happened in a span of like, I mean, we started the company in May of 2017 and like I was giving a TED talk by the end of 2018. So like very short period of time of like, nobody knew me to everybody knew me as like the candle lady. That's crazy. That is a crazy story. So like you didn't even have a chance to consider what anybody else thought because you were just running a million miles an hour. Um, I mean, with just two the kids other, in tow. <laughs> with two kids in tow. First off, blowing my mind. I don't mean to, to, to be that guy who makes this statement, but I did not think that you were old enough to have a career for 20 years. So, you know, great there. But holy crap. Um, what was that like going from being, you know, having a stable career where, where you were an employee, and I don't mean that in a bad way, but you worked for somebody else, which comes with benefits, it comes with a layer of security, it comes with um, retirement, not a lack of, <laughs> yeah, retirement, right? <laughs> it comes with a sense that for the most part, when you walk out that door, you can somewhat not all the time, but you can somewhat leave work at that door, right? It's definitely not chasing you down at 3am. Um, you know, maybe certain situations to I'm going to run a business. Well, do you know how to run a business? Well, I've never done it before, but other people are doing it. So what was that part of the conversation? So you had the cannabis stigmas, like whatever, we'll figure that part out. But now it's, you're going from, it was, you're a, a dental hygienist, you said? So yeah. being a dental hygienist to being a CEO of a business where, I mean, there's a lot of people who don't do that job very well and they, you know, they, they went to school for it. So, you know, what was that decision like to take that risk, especially having two kids? Cause yeah, it's not fun. I, I, it's not. <laughs> yeah. At first, well, at least. well, there there was a simultaneous movement happening in Vermont, and I think now it's definitely on a national, very much more like marketing monetized way. But the whole hashtag Me Too and Times Up movement, like that, happened literally like two months after I started this, like for women by women cannabis brand. So Vermont, which is very pro small business, supportive in so many different ways. Um, the Vermont Center for Emerging Technology was putting on a female founders, basically like full open book panel. So it was held at Hotel Vermont. They would get these really successful CEOs out of Vermont 
to talk to a room of a hundred women who were either just started businesses like I had, or were just in startup mode. And the very first one that I went to um, was with Donna Carpenter of Burton Snowboards. And I got to meet the late Jake Carpenter um, or Jake Burton, who happened to be there and shook his hand and was like, you know, they were like, we've heard about you. We know what you're doing. And like, we think it's incredible. Like keep wow. doing that. So getting wow. that endorsement right off the bat and getting there, like, true stories and the oh shit moments and like really seeing like it's going to be messy it's going to be dirty we don't know what we're doing you know i love the story that that donna and and jake like to share about how one of the first days that he went out after you know making the snowboards for the first time is he went out with 50 snowboards and came home with 52 snowboards and like <laughs> that story right there of like <laughs> you know you're not going to get it right the first time and maybe not the second time maybe not the third time but like don't give up, you know, and that sounds so cliche, but like, it's, it's so true. I mean, you know, my husband and I have both seen the really dark days of running a business. And certainly this last year has been really difficult. And there were moments where we were like, like a lot of us, like, I don't know, is this happening? Is this not happening? Like our, you know, the fact that we got deemed essential, but like we straight up shut down and like, that was crazy scary. But if anybody knows who's listening, who has a cannabis company, like trying to have a cannabis company, trying to operate in a world where everybody tells, you no. This last year was so much easier for us because we're so used to being that adaptable. And like, that's another thing too, like, because I've been told no, you know, so many times, like, I don't even freaking like register that as an answer anymore. Like it, it really yeah. just like right off the back. Okay, no, all right, what else you got? <laughs> like, um, so yeah, I, I don't know if I answered your question, kind of trailed off there, but, um, but yeah, no, it's, uh, <laughs> it's been crazy. It's been crazy and it's only just recently started to like kind of settle down and I feel like I'm like taking the startup glasses off and put on a different lens of what I want for the next two years, the next five years, um, really getting to analyze and look at like what we really built in that crazy time. Um, and like hearing people be like, your story is insane. What you've done is amazing. And we're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, we're in it like more, more, more. I don't know, like can't really register it on the successes, but like, I've really just only in the last few months been like, holy cow. Like this is not to be like a super Vermonter, but like, seriously, holy cow. Like it's, uh, it's something I'm really proud of. And yeah, I, I can't believe it either. It, I just can't believe it either. It's a dream. No, you were definitely built from it. I mean, built for this. I can tell from the personality. I'm glad you found it. You know, just in the way that you talked about how you transitioned is you saw something that you wanted and you figure out a way to make it happen. Right. And I think a lot of people, especially now with the pandemic and everything else need to take inspiration from that story. Right. If you're, if, even if you are happy, but you have a passion, even if you love your job and you go there every day and you love what you do, but there is another passion, like I can't get, wait to go off work, to get off work and do this. Or I love talking about that, whatever it is. And if you know that be doing that is going to make you happy every day, like this stupid show, then you need to chase it. Right. And that's why I look at people like you and the rest of the guests that I've had on this show that figured it out and they take nothing into something and now they have something they can actually work on. That's the hardest moment right there to go from nothing to something. Right. And you did that and you ran with it. Yeah. Especially with no knowledge, you know, I mean, it, it really, I'm so glad actually in a lot of ways that we didn't have any business sense about us because I probably knowing myself and my type A personality would have had a business plan. It would have been like really hard, steadfast about sticking to it. And I mean, in the beginning, we thought we were going to be farmers, and we were looking at land and we thought we were going to be, you know, processors. Then we thought, you know, all the things like we've gone through the gamut and like little did we know that landing on the brand is like kind of like the holy grail of like being able to yeah. deliver it to the most people like had no idea, you know, that that was where you started. And so um, or a good place to start. And so, we, you know, we're just so fortunate that the industry in Vermont has kept up the agricultural um you know, excellence in Vermont has kept up the pace of what we're trying to bring for excellent quality products, um, both in testing, both in processing, both in sourcing, um, raw product. I mean, it's, it's been amazing. I mean, again, like, this is the part where it's like, oh, it's so fancy and it's so shiny. And look at all these things. Like, we have had a lot of luck. You know, yes, the drive is there and the determination is there. But yeah, we have definitely had some, some luck along the way. Um, and I, I don't know how to attribute that to anything besides like, you know, you're, you're on the right path and you're living in harmony, I guess, when those things happen. I mean, I look at luck as, as an accelerator, right? You know, that, that's what luck is. It gets you to the place that you're supposed to go a little bit faster um, or a lot faster in some cases, right? So, 
you know, it, I think it's great that you've, you've had a few bouts of luck. And, and I think we all do, as long as, like you said, we're on the right path. Um, you know, it's interesting. You talk about obviously being a, a woman run brand for it focused on women. And I look at the industry as a whole and, you know, I'll, I'll make a bold statement here. Some people can agree with me. They can't, I don't really give a shit who agrees with me, but I think the businesses like yours are really what's helping remove the stigma from our industry, keep it the way oh, that it needs yeah. to be and innovates yeah. it. Right. Because totally. if you left it to a bunch of us dudes, right? We would have like 50% THC weed with like flames all over the side of it and everything else. And like, it would be all Corvettes and shit. <laughs> bongs and, and, we bongs and have, bongs. Yeah. We, but we wouldn't have these awesome brands, like the women run led brands and the brands that are focused on women, you guys focus on branding and things like that, because that's what appeals to you in, in, in that's how we market to women. And that's what's advancing the cannabis space and building these national brands. Um, a brand that I work with that I'll call out her highness right they you know they have a thc line as well too funny enough it is 100 percent focused on women i fucking love that brand i look at it and mm-hmm. i'm like you guys have great branding your brand as well too brands like pop and barkley like these totally. would exist without totally. the focus on women and we would have literally like john's fuego and it would just you know it would have like we'd probably we would have natively gotten to Canada. What was the the stupid Canada snorts or whatever that's going around the internet? That's probably what the men would have done without the help of women. So <laughs> it's interesting to see your different take on it. And I mean, you've been kind of agreeing and nodding through this whole thing, but I'm sure that you truly really believe that women are really the ones that are advancing this industry and keeping it mainstream or acceptable for mainstream. Totally. I mean, that was my pitch all along when I told my husband I wanted to start a cannabis company. He was like, mm, okay. And I was like, and I wanted to be the women. He was like, yes. And then when I went on to be like, you know, I know as a mother, I make 80, if not 99% of the healthcare decisions in my own household. You know, I'm like the resident doctor. I'm not a doctor, but I'm like, you know, you got a rash, you got a fever. Like I know exactly what to do when. And like, I just keep having that mentality of like the women make the decisions what man out there hasn't tried their wife's eye cream or used a pumice stone on their foot because it's in the shower. Like you're out there, you know, you've done it. And like hair product, you name it. Like it's in your house. You're going to use it. Same thing goes for CBD. And I knew maybe it wouldn't happen right off, but I knew if we could get the women, we could get the men too. And I've definitely been, you know, criticized in the beginning, you know, when we were going around and kind of like trying to figure out if we wanted to get funding or not, and like meeting with VCs, like, people being like, well, you're alienating half of the population. You're like, well, that, that's true. Maybe in the, in the beginning, but like the packaging is dope. The products are awesome. We came out with that Medicool, like so many men buy that product because it fucking looks cool. It's blue. Yeah. It's like, it's tingly, like smells, you know, like it, it's for dudes, you know, yes, women, it's part of the women's brand. It's part of EMT's line, but like dudes are the ones who are buying that product. And then like this most recent product that we just came out with the CBG balm, like you don't think I didn't think about making that smell like a cologne, like all people love it because it smells amazing and like doesn't smell like flowers and it doesn't smell like cologne. It smells like that perfect thing. People tell me it smells like summer. And I agree, like anybody can wear it. Doesn't have to be for women by women. Men are going to have back aches. They're going to ask their wife to rub something on them. Like might as well smell good too. Like think like that. Like I am the customer. Yes, I'm the brand, but like I'm totally the target audience. I'm going to be 37 this year, you know, I've got kids that are five and almost seven, like I'm the target audience. Like (laughs) if it's not for me, then who's it for? You know? I mean, my wife's right in that same category. She's 33. She's going to have two kids. I, um, I've been wanting her to try CBD just, just for general inflammation and everything else. Um, you know, her mom has autoimmune, she has autoimmune and I figured it would really help her. So you know, I'm honestly probably going to try your products, give them to her after she gives birth. What, I mean, so I don't know how much you've looked into this. I'm actually curious to know, have they done any studies on CBD and other cannabinoids during pregnancy and what the uh, effect on the baby and everything else is? Yeah, they have not necessarily CBD so much so. And, you know, not to like get myself in trouble, but I feel like the show, you know, you guys know it's anecdotal information. Like we know this, right. It's not yeah. clinically, you know, verified yet. Um, But no, I mean, there's some really, really great studies happening in Israel. They're not published yet. There's some happening in the United States. But again, like, it's that very delicate place of like, do we want to test it on women? Do these women want to be honest about their cannabis consumption? You know, 
Again, a lot of the studies that I have read really pertain mostly to smoking and higher content THC. And so it doesn't really provide a lot of great information for CBD yet, yet. But anecdotally, you know, I'm hearing tons of people having huge success about the pluses and minuses of going on Prozac or Zoloft versus using CBD. You know, oh, I'm not yeah. against pharmaceuticals. I am not against science. Like whatever works for you, I am not anti, you know, antidepressants. Like I, I'm not. So I don't want people to get the wrong impression. Like whatever works for you works for you. I just want to live in a world where supporting the endocannabinoid system in the way that mother nature intended it to is the first wave. And if that's not going to work, then go on to these other pharmaceuticals, but at least use cannabinoids that synergistically work with a system that we know works in harmony with cannabis. Let's try that. And like, let's let that just universally be known that like, that's how we should treat these type of ailments like autoimmune, like postpartum. And like, until that day, I will not rest as far as, you know, shouting from a rooftop what I know. So I completely agree with you. I mean, I am the furthest thing from being natural and holistic and spiritual or a hippie <laughs> or, or any of that shit. I am your typical dumbass guy. But, you know, I've been around enough people and I've been in this industry long enough that I 100% agree with you. And I think, you know, on this show, Ricky Williams said it best that it's a combination of Eastern and Western medicine, whereas, you know, Eastern medicine is more preventative, like you would do with an oil change and other things in your car. And Western medicine is more reactive where, you know, shit happened. We need the real tools to fix you now. Right. So I agree with you. You know, if there are issues going on, why not? figure out a natural way to fix it. Why not try diet and exercise and natural supplements and things like that? And if none of that works, if you can't restore it naturally, then we bring in the big guns. It's like, all right, cool. Now we'll bring in the magic potions that the pharmaceutical companies made and figure mm -hmm. out how to fix you, right? Because it's gone too far. But I 100% agree with you. And I think I like to think that our nation is going that way across the board, right? You know, we, we listen to a lot of the news and everything else. And there is a big focus on health and natural products and things like that, because we've had issues for so long. So I love seeing people like you leading that charge. Like I said, at the beginning of the show, I think someone like you, who is a mom, who is a professional that has that long medical professional career is one of the perfect people to be uh, the introduction into cannabis, right? For folks, yeah. because, and that's what I look at CBD is too, is CBD is your way to test the waters into other cannabis. It might be the end all be all for you. It might be the perfect product and it might solve a lot of your needs. Or like me, it might solve one need that cannabis full THC solves another need, right? And you can start segmenting. I think people like us who have been working with, I'm fucking all over the place with this thought, but I think people like us who have used cannabis, we used it in a way and we kind of used it for things we didn't understand. But as we've educated ourselves on the plant, a lot of that starts to make sense. And for someone like you who, you know, I hear you talk and you kind of sprinkle it into conversations, but I haven't really seen you go full nerd. You seem to know this plant really well and all the components of it and everything else, right? I mean, what the hell was my major point with that? But um, I remember what I said before I called you a nerd and I didn't even mean that in a derogatory way. Sorry about that. <laughs> well, one point I want to make too, like, again, like, I am putting so much of myself into the journey of cannabis, right? I've used it recreationally and then I found it didn't really work for me when I was going through sort of like that manic state, postpartum anxiety, um, dealing with like straight up like my shit. Like if you're a mom and you don't see and feel things bubble to the surface as a result of becoming a mother, like you, everybody projects their stuff quote unquote stuff on their children. The way that yeah. you then process the stuff, what your childhood was like and going forward of what type of parent that you're gonna be, or you're gonna be completely opposite of what your parents raised you to be. Like all of that stuff comes to the surface. And I feel like so much of it for women is connected to our hormonal influxes. It's connected to just changes in general from day to day, from cycle to cycle that it's just such a roller coaster for women that not having somebody or something supporting your system so much so like, is just, it's just why, like, why are we putting ourselves at such a disadvantage? So that's one point. The other point for me is like, so I went through the pandemic. I went through the whole gamut of like, I'm going to smoke weed every day and use CBD to fall asleep. I'm going to use edibles every single day to like deal and like stay elevated and stay focused and positive. Like went through the gamut through, um, through this last year. And now I'm in, let's see, this Saturday will be my third week of completely detoxing from smoking weed which like I was doing on the regular in addition to using CBD. And like, I don't 
need it. Like I thought it was something where I was like, I'm going to use CBD and I'm going to use at this hour and I'm going to use THC at this hour. And this is the perfect harmony for me right now at this point in my life, things have kind of settled more post COVID with the business and with where I'm at with the kids and headed to summer and all the things that like, and through therapy I've done. I mean, the CBD is one component of my wellness journey, but like now I realize like that is my main squeeze. You know, I used to be like, oh, it's THC. Now it's CBN. Now it's CBG. Now it's CBD. But like, seriously, like through the last five years, like CBD has continued to be the constant. And if that's the case for me, like I'm super excited for legalization. I want my customers to be kind of curious. I want to be able to offer them that safety and that certainty that what they're using is good. However, I know myself and I know my customers and I feel like there's going to be like a big spike in the radar. And yeah, there are going to be someone who women who are going to continue to smoke weed and maybe they're going to smoke it every day. But my hypothesis for the future is that CBD is going to continue to just be on this trajectory. And that can't honestly, THC is going to be like this. I'm sure there's people that are listening that are like, that is impossible. There's no way there is going to be a certain demographic of people who are just going to smoke it every day and they're going to use it recreationally. And that is fantastic. And I probably will continue at some point too, to use it recreationally. The way my life is now, it just, I don't have that type of place and time for it. I just don't. I'm just in a place where I want to sleep and I want to wake up and I want to be really alert and I want to be really there for my kids. And I just can't feel that way. Smoking weed. I just can't. Not like I was when I was just homebound. So that's me. I think that's awesome that you can recognize that. I think a lot of people need to do that too. They need to be honest with themselves about their use and how it affects their lives in both a positive and negative way. I love that you can admit that here. You know, my biggest, the reason I love podcasts so much is because I think people show their real side, right? We're not just showing the Instagram or Facebook and all the success shit. Most of the stuff we talked about so far has been negative, like, you know, the problems <laughs> you've been dealing with and everything else. Um, <laughs> You know, but on this note, you talk about how you were smoking more and then, you know, three weeks you haven't. Um, I agree with you. I think CBD is going to grow exponentially over THC. And the reason being is I see CBD essentially becoming just a daily dietary supplement that people take regularly in pill or vitamin form might have, you know, some hemp flim stones or some shit like that. Right. But, you know, and you, you have stuff like on your site, whether it's the tinctures and everything else. I see that becoming a standard, almost like multivitamin that people take. I think THC yeah. is going to be for more adult use reasons, more extreme reasons and extreme cases. But I think it's interesting that you talked about how sometimes you use it more or less, because I think for me, I go through waves too, where I'm smoking more, I'm smoking less. I don't really do the tolerance breaks two months because I don't really drink alcohol anymore. But I think for me, a lot of times when I'm smoking more, it's when my life is tougher and I have more things going on. But as most people would assume, it's not an escape for me. It, to me, it helps me deal with the shit, right? Where it's like, you got a million things to deal with and you're crushed by the anxiety of all the things that you have to deal with, whether they're good, bad, or indifferent. And that just freezes you to, to be able to leverage cannabis, to be able to pull each one into focus individually and focus on that and deal with it and put it aside. You know, so it's interesting, like you said, you're like, hey, I've come through the storm. The business is, is, is in a good spot. I've been able to get out in front of it and see where I want to take this. You don't have those million things that you need to unpack and deal with and focus on, which is why I think it's great what you're doing right now. And you've recognized where you need to be. And I, I hope more people take that again. I think there's a lot of inspiration to take from you, not necessarily by following you step by step, but just the things that you're able to admit to yourself, the things that you're able to recognize, um, and then share that in a public forum like this. I mean, you know, I hope a lot of people are inspired by your story. Um, we've talked negative. We've talked in the past a lot. So (laughs) let's, let's take this transition towards the end of this episode and, and talk about what the future holds for you and what you're looking forward to for this year you know, things that you have planned. I see there's a big focus on, on CBD skincare um, on your website. I'm very interested in what the next level of CBD products are. You know, the tinctures and the supplements are starting to become standard. People are educated on that. There are a lot of products that can benefit from the addition of CBD. There are a lot of products that can't that, you know, I've known that you've called out like the pillowcases and the hand sanitizer and shit like that. So what are the next level products that we should actually give a shit, have CBD in them where we'll actually see the benefit because I'm starting to see yeah. it like spas and things like that. It's totally, crazy. totally. So 
you know, it's no joke, you know, building a company that has really been quality and safety forward, you know, now the industry is catching up and that's fantastic. You know, obviously that's the light I want to be in the world and I'm starting to see that. Uh, my husband sits on the GRMA uh, CBD task force, which, you know, you touched on, um, you know, eventually this will be recognized as a dietary supplement. I mean, I truly believe that too. And you're not going to get to that point unless you have very specific guidelines to ensure safety. And so for us as this teeny tiny little company, I mean, we sit on this task force with, you know, the biggest names in cannabis who all have the same goal of keeping people safe and putting it in a category where we can all have it accessible to as many people as possible. So I'm really proud of my husband for taking the time to do that because he has a million other things that he is struggling, but it's so important. And, you know, sitting in those meetings, he always comes home and he's so jazzed about where we're headed for the industry. And so um, that is just incredible. So continuing to uh, strengthen our partnership with UL Underwriters Laboratory, we've been partnering with them for the last year and a half now for all of our testing. Um, which is no joke, um, super expensive and super time consuming. But again, it just reiterates for us, you know, how effective our products are and that the label matches the effectiveness. Like that's incredible. And I will never be unhappy um, by waiting for test results, even though we're totally waiting for test results, but um, waiting for those things because it just ensures safety. So that's never gonna go away and that's just gonna continue to improve. Um, for product wise, so our CBD skincare has been on the market for three years. So like way ahead of like all these brands that are coming out now that tout themselves as CBD topical brands. So we knew back in, what would that be 2018, that women were gonna be using these products. I use it inside out, like shower in it if I could. And again, like being that user, like I love going to spas, I love going and getting massages. If it's good for the out inside, it's got to be good for the outside. So then the nerd side of me went down the rabbit hole of understanding bioavailability and understanding cannabinoids and how concentrated they are in the skin and was like, all right, well, all I'm seeing on the market for topicals right now is thousands and thousands and thousands of milligrams. I went to Expo East and like all these reps were coming up to my booth and being like, you only have 250 milligrams in your bomb. Like, what's that going to do for you? And I'm like... Well, try it, <laughs> try it against your product and tell me which side feels better or different. And, and you know, like obviously they didn't come back because I know what the truth was. So that was a big one for me is making products that actually work that you don't need a lot of product milligrams in and is affordable. So like straight up off the bat, the spa side of things was like, I know women are gonna be going there. I know that, you know, being going, getting married and having your bridal party, you're gonna be nervous, you're gonna be tense, you want your skin to look good. It's just, why not have this added bonus? You know, you don't have to tell your grandmother that you lathered in CBD before you had your nuptials. Like it's just there at the spa. And again, that like continuous, like destigmatizing exposure. I mean, this seems like so silly to be talking about this now because it's just fucking everywhere. But like, then it was it. And like using these spas and them putting their necks on the line to credit my brand. And then now I'm able to like, offer credibility to their spa because people want to go to that spa because it has EMT because they know that it means safety because they know the products are going to be good because they know that the, the massage therapists know their shit because they've been through my training because I continuously educate them like that has now grown to like what it is now and like this is bizarre to me okay I'm going to be perfectly honest with you like what's bizarre to me is I thought that the spa was just going to be done right like COVID happened spa shut down retail shut down I really didn't see spas coming back for like years. And I will tell you the last 12 new accounts that we have received have all been spas and none of them have been ones that I have pitched. And it's because of word of mouth. It's because they know what they're getting from their colleagues. They know that it sells itself. They know that they're getting that backing from us and that we continue to endorse them. Like you don't think hospitality isn't super important to Vermont. You don't think like now it's so crazy. All the spas that we work with and resorts that we work with are fully booked through the summer. You don't think that we're not like fully taking advantage of that opportunity. We deserve it. It's been this like yeah. three year long train of teaching and educating, exposing and making sure the credit card processor works, making sure that what they say on their social media isn't gonna get their account shut down that they've grown for the last 20 years, 10 years. You know, like it's all wrapped up now in this really beautiful symbiosis of like, we did the work, it was hard. 
we continue to strive for this quality. We continue to be that beacon of light for safety and efficacy. And like, it's paying off. Like it's finally, finally really paying off. Um, and kudos to spas, man. I, you know, of all the products they could choose from right now, of all the people that are jamming down their throats, it's, you know, 50 cents for a hundred milligrams on your skin. Like I can't compete with that. Like, that's not my product. That's never going to be yeah. my brand. That's never going to be my product. And like, the fact that my spas and high-end five-star resorts are like, we don't want that shit. They know it's crap. They don't want it because I've been telling them for three years that it's crap and they know it's crap. So like, I'm sorry, I'm getting really like fired up here, but like, it's, I finally, love it. I it's love finally, it. It's finally getting to a point where like all that education, people are so much smarter. They're just so dedicated to the, to the science now. And they just want more and more and more. And every time that I go there, Every time I do a demo, every time I do a training, like they're hungry for more information. Like they're not your typical massage therapist. They're not your typical first time user. Like they've drank the Kool-Aid three years ago. And now they're telling all the other massage therapists, which Kool-Aid to drink and it happens to be ours. So it's, um, it's a really neat, it's really neat time to, uh, to be having that skincare. And it's so funny because people are like, oh, well, CBD skincare is so new. I'm like, well, it's actually been on the market for three years. Uh, <laughs> we've just only recently been putting our label on it because we private labeled it to all these spas for the longest time. Cause you know, put your label on it, they'll sell it. But now they want our label on it. Like all of our resorts now are like, nah, put your label on it. Cause they know EMT. So that's been a really cool experience too. That is absolutely awesome. I have a feeling that this is going to be a really fun year for you. You know, 2020 was, is weird. You know, it's, we had this so little cannabis community going into 2020. It was starting to get big. We we're starting to get some attention from the outside. We thought we were going to lose it for a year. We got deemed essential everybody got to put their head down and kind of work in darkness and we're coming out the other side of it. And it's like, we've come out to the world. It's like, Hey, cannabis is here. It's not going anywhere. You got to take it seriously. You rid that rode that wave, not wrote it. You, you worked hard to push that wave along with everybody else, along with all the other great men and women in this industry. And I love the fact that you're able to see the benefits of it. Of course, I would love to tell you like, hey, you made it. But you know, as well as I do, that this is still the beginning of the journey. Yeah. Like, you get to take a yeah. step back for five seconds, look and be like, oh, this is freaking cool. <laughs> All right. So this is what we're doing for 2021, 2022, 2026. There's the rules, guys. Back to work. Everybody go crazy. So it's so true. It's so true. And even like entertaining acquisition again, you know, we, we went through that um, and it was a really great experience and not acquired. It didn't end up working out where we were acquired. Um, but I've learned so much about where I was at with the brand. Then it was like still my baby and I want to hold on to it and you can't sell it like I can, you can't steward it like I can. And like, even though it was a really, you know, it, it didn't, feel, it didn't work out. It wasn't the right amount of money. You know, there's a lot of different reasons, but like, now I feel like I'm so much more open to it. Not like I'm tired and I don't want to do it anymore, but I can see how much value I can now bring to somebody who can like really take it and like blow it up to the next level. Because like my ideas for what I want to do for the next two years or the next three years or five years or even just cannabis in general, like my level of love of, of wanting to like continue to consult and shepherd some kind of help in a brand, like I would be ready for that. You know, I feel like now my brand is like, to use the words of Will Reed from Common Sense Amelia, um, is that now I feel like my brand is like the kid that lives above the garage, right? Like I can go up there, I can make sure that they're cool. <laughs> if they need me, like they can come down, but like that, you know, I never thought that I would get to that with the brand because it's it's been my baby, you know? And now I can really see, you know, the light at the end of the tunnel that, you know, if an, another acquisition comes along, like A, I still have a ton of more gas in the tank to like really help like tr make that transition. And I want to see it do that. I want to see it be the best and biggest that it could possibly be, um, whatever that ends up looking like. But, you know, it's it's been such an interesting evolution. And I'm excited, you know, if, if I run and own this brand, you know, until the, the day I decide I don't want to do it anymore, you know, many, many, 20, whatever years from now, great. But like, it's a very interesting place to be in now of like, I'm proud of it. And I did that. And um, whatever will be, will be at this point. That's awesome. I, I want you to take back and take a step back and realize what you just said when you're talking about acquisition with no formal business experience in one of the hardest industries in the country right now, you built a brand that somebody was willing to purchase. I just want you to think about that. You, After you, like you literally a year built a, in business. 
<laughs> from scratch. You built a brand and somebody offered you money for it because they think that they could be successful with that brand. That's fucking incredible. It's incredible. And if you're not inspired by that, then there's something wrong with you. And it wasn't like a little one. I mean, it was grassroots at the time. It's now Cure Leaf, but like it wasn't like a tiny little, you know, company that was acquiring us. Like, I think it- <laughs> they have this brand oh. called Select. If you guys haven't heard of them, they're kind of big. Um, yeah, that's that's incredible. Well, listen, and that we've- whole experience was so amazing. Like, it really was. Like, I'm so honored that I was in that room. I been on webinars with people that were in that room with me that I continue. I'm so glad that I stayed in cannabis and like, you know, it's incredible. Like I, I will always look upon at that, that time, although it didn't work out, you know, potentially, in, in, you know, as an acquisition, like that really like shaped me going forward of how much more I wanted to be strengthening the brand and how much I knew I was on the right path of like what I was after as far as like what kind of brand I wanted to build. So very validating and very educational. The last question I've got to ask you, and I don't, again, I don't mean this in a negative way. It just baffles me because I don't think I can do it. What's it like working with your husband? <laughs> I love that question. Um, I can't imagine not having my husband as my business partner. Like, I know he's watching right now, but like, I, I and like, I just have to say, like, he. Well, I can gets- try to log him off real quick if you want to be honest. <laughs> see if you can him out. He gets the best out of me and don't get me wrong like there have been many times that I'm like I am the brand you don't know anything I do everything I mean like we've come a long way from that but like I don't know how people run businesses not with their spouse I just don't you know we talk about it amongst all the other things that we do to run our life the business is just one part of running our life but like there's there's not you know there's not a line of like we only talk about it between nine to five or we only you know like it's so just all part of our life. And that's another thing too. Like if, if we do, you know, get acquired at some point, like I think that we're in this place, just like we had our two children. We're like, we're ready to see them go to the next level. You know, my kids are both going to be in school this fall. And like to be able to have like three, four full days to work together. Like, I don't even know what that's going to be like. Like the fact that we've been able to accomplish what we've accomplished with like literally zero time to do it. Like, I can't even imagine, but no, I mean, he's my best friend and I've known that before I was going to marry him and start a business, but like we had a baby started a business and got married all in the same year. And we are still happily married and we are (laughs) still happily running a business together. And, uh, yeah, I, I I just got off. Um, I did an IG live with uh, mother moon hemp company and same thing. They're like a mirror image of our company, but in Colorado. And same thing. She's like, we, I can't imagine running it with anyone else. And I know that's not the case for everybody. You know, a lot of people are like, I would kill my spouse if we were together. Um, but I'm just so blessed that uh, he, he's the best person I know and, uh, and the smartest person I know. So that helps. That's awesome. My parents did that. I, um, I'll be the first one to admit, and I think my wife understands this. I think I could work for her. I don't think I could <laughs> have her work for me. I, I, she is a great partner. She's a harder worker than me. She's more driven. She is incredibly smart. She can figure things out, but she doesn't listen to me. Yeah. So. I mean, our lanes are defined. I'm not going to lie. Our lanes are very <laughs> much defined. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, I'm like I said, I'm excited for this fall when we actually get real time to work together without one of us being out of the house and one of us being with the children. So I'm really excited to see what comes out of that. So uh Part two, you know, I have to get back to you on that one. We we will definitely do a follow up. I'm in, an embedded. I'll just I'll just you know shadow you guys at work. Oh totally. man, this will be fun. Our own reality TV show. Yeah, totally. Uh, That'll be fun. Well, I've held you up for an hour here. It's been ah, a great conversation. Um, dude, Todd, thank you so much. So fun. No, I'm very glad you reached out. Trust me, it, I I loved hearing it. I love your story. I really enjoyed the conversation. Like I said, anyone's a friend of Rosie is a friend of mine. I hope we get to run into each other soon too. Let's uh, let's get let's get the promos out there before we let you go. Cool. Pro- what do you want me to do? Like promo. <laughs> Sorry, all your uh, all your social media. You're like, wait, oh, yeah, wait, yeah, wait. Yeah. Are, are we playing? Like, I don't have any promotions on right now. Um, yeah. So, so, where uh, can we find you, dude? Across the board, kept it super simple. Again, branding 101, EMT, CBD. You can find us any way, shape, or form. Um, definitely check out the TED talk. 
it's not cannabis, 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 cannabis future without stigma. And uh, yeah, everything else. It's just EMT CBD, short and sweet. Very cool. Awesome. Well, you're going to come back and do this again, right? Please, please. Yeah, Absolutely. my pleasure. Cool. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. And thank you, everybody at home for watching. Thank you, LinkedIn, for watching our second episode on LinkedIn Live. I hope you guys are enjoying this series. We've done about 140 of them. So if you've only seen two. You should definitely head back to our YouTube page at youtube.com slash elevate your grind. Of course, if you missed any of today's episode, we're going to be live or not live. It'll be on any of our podcast audio platforms on Monday, as well as our YouTube channel. Again, that's youtube.com slash elevate your grind. If you want to see any of the great panels coming up for C-Lab, that's joincelab.com, including my panel on technology available to grow and scale your brand. That's going to be on May 20th, and it's going to be a great panel because I'm hosting it. And that's all I have to say, because I'm really bad at putting things together on time. Um, outside of that, folks, we're going to be live here tomorrow. I have a really hard time saying his last name. So Sebastian, I'm really sorry. I'm going to mess it up, but we're going to be live with Sebastian Sentner of the CEO of Hervé. It's going to be an awesome episode. I'm a big fan of their company. Thank you to Ashley for stopping by folks, and we will see you tomorrow.